Hi, this is Tom DeWeese, President of the American Policy Center, and I want to welcome you to this, our second uh, training webinar for local activists, how to fight back on the local level. And we're going to get into much more detail today on uh, how to get organized, how to get started, uh, what to do. And uh, I, I think you're going to learn quite a bit from, from uh, this. I'm very excited about this one. Now, after years of hiding behind innocent sounding policies and programs, usually about environmental protection or the excuse of simply preparing good development, uh, good development plan for our future and our communities, now the left has removed the cover screen and they are actually telling us the truth about their real goals. A complete reorganization of human society through top-down control. This is what we're facing. The COVID lockdown has shown us that their plan for our, what their plan for our future really is. It's all about an, an all out attack on the three pillars of freedom. It's all set to destroy free enterprise, eliminate private property, eradicate freedom of individual choice. Now, most of us want to focus on the presidential campaign. It's more fun to be involved in, in uh, those larger campaigns like that, hold big rallies and so forth. And how many times have you heard Trump is going to win. Well, that may be true, and I certainly hope it is. But if we don't focus on the local level and the state levels in our own activism, even if Trump does win, he may be forced to stand alone. And that means nothing is going to be accomplished. And what if he doesn't win? What do we do then? Well, COVID has proven one fact very clearly. We must fight on the local and the state levels. Just observe what the mayors and the governors have done through this crisis as they've installed themselves as dictators over your lives, paying no attention to the rule of law. This is the most frightening thing we've discovered here. Fighting on the local level is where we must concentrate. They fully intend to use the tactics that they have learned under the pandemic to continue to enforce their agenda. And that's why this series of webinars, plus the, the manual and the other tools and tactics that we've developed are all designed to fight and win at the local and the state levels. I've developed the concept of freedom pods. But what does that mean? It means focus in your community and fight to assure that free enterprise, private property, and your personal freedom of choice are secure. For example, fight to restore the ability of local residents to start their own individually owned businesses on the, on the local level, to compete and grow. Sustainable policies are making it harder, almost impossible, to start a small business because of the jungle of rules, regulations, licenses, and taxes. These actually help the global corporations crush and eliminate local mom and pop shops. We need to stand up in our local community and stop that practice and give local, local businesses an opportunity to move forward. The smart growth attack on private property is growing as single family neighborhoods and private landlords are being targeted for elimination. The only possible outcome of these attacks is that eventually the only source of housing left to us will be government housing and that is the real goal. Freedom of choice in our personal lives, preparing a life of our own is under attack as more and more regulations are being implemented to force us to follow the crowd. Don't stand out. Don't promote ideas that will shake up their well-planned society. Political correctness dictates how you're to think and to talk. Constant licensing gives government the power to dictate your every action, the products that you can buy, and even how you may raise your own children. None of this represents the pillars of freedom. You know, our founders created our republic so that we could most easily control government at the local level. The left knows this very well, and they've done an incredible job taking control of city and county governments across the nation. Remember, since the 60s, their pledge has been think globally, act locally, and they've done it. And that's why we must now focus our efforts 
right there on the local level to restore freedom. Start by creating your community to be a freedom pod. And when you succeed, the next step will be to spread the freedom pod to the next community and then to the next. Then it will move up into the state legislative level and then to Congress. You must first build a solid foundation and build on it. It rarely works the other way around. That's the goal of this series of training webinars. We are going to teach you tactics for fighting and winning on the local level. Yes, the election is just around the corner, but these tactics are for building a solid foundation for way beyond the election. We must be prepared for fights that you and I have never had to fight before in this country. So, you know, many times I've heard from people saying, I'm only one person. How do I begin? How do I find others to join me? What should I focus on? We're going to teach you the answers to all those questions. So let's get started. Today, I'm very pleased to present to you one of the premier experts in training activists to stand up and lead. Mary Baker presents intense workshops to teach you how to become a citizen ninja. And she's going to be with us for the next two webinars. I've also included her materials in our new activist handbook, which I'll tell you about at the end of today's training webinar. Using her tactics and your dedication to freedom, my goal is to create a powerful local force, one fist across the nation to establish freedom pods and, destroy, and restore our republic. So let's get started. Mary, Mary Baker, I'm very, very pleased to have you with us today. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your activities, your, uh, your, the, the kind of training that you do, how you do it, and uh, what's your goal? How, to, how is, as we uh, prepare to pre present uh, to local activists, what, uh, what's your approach? How do you like to, uh, what's your goal? As you, as you begin to build on, on that. Well, good morning, Tom. It's great to be here. And thank you so much for inviting me. And um, I just want to start by saying that I uh, started engaging in local politics back in 2007 or so, and very quickly realized uh, that our freedoms are being besmirched, they're being taken away. And I landed on sustainable development in Agenda 21 and discovered you. <laughs> Way back then, I discovered you and Mike Shaw and some of the, some of the early, early uh, leaders and fighters and role models who have worked tirelessly to bring this information to the public. And, um, and so it's such an honor for me to actually be sitting here with you, um, one of your early students. <laughs> um, so thank you. It's really an um, honor. I appreciate so, that. I'm, you know, go ahead. Yeah, so <laughs> when I got started, I couldn't believe that this was true, that this was actually going on, that there was this large agenda. You know, what do you mean the Fed isn't part of the, you know, the, the, the Federal Reserve isn't part of, you know, the federal government and, and what do you mean the United Nations is trying to control us at the local level and I mean it was truly just way too, too crazy to believe that that could happen here and wait don't we have a constitution, don't we have local government that, you know, that makes it possible for local citizens to get involved and how could this happen, you know? And then uh, I started engaging because I thought, well, I'm gonna get out there and see what's going on. And sure enough, I was just shocked by uh, the manipulation, the nudging, the bullying that was going on uh, at the level of government agencies, even local uh, county. And uh, and state and and uh, you know obviously all the way to the top. It was so shocking. 
I just thought, wait a minute, they want our feedback and this is how we're being treated if we, if we don't agree with them, if we don't agree with their plan. Well, why did they invite us here to begin with? Aren't, I mean, public comment is an important part of the, the process and yet they don't want us to talk and they shut us down. And, and actually they even manipulate the schedule, uh, the agenda. Uh, to throw us off course. So this was really shocking information. And then I was lucky enough, I live in San Diego, to attend a Smart Growth Conference. And for three full days, I went to breakout sessions. This was their 11th annual Smart Growth Conference. And I went with two other people and we just couldn't believe what we were hearing. It was primary source information saying everything basically that you'd been saying and Mike Shaw had been saying, Patrick Wood had been saying, et cetera. And it, I, I, anyway, I didn't, that was the beginning for me when I realized, okay, this, this is really happening. And so when I got out there, I realized we're not going to be successful if we don't have an educated force of people, of citizens, who know what they're doing. Not only do they understand the topic, but how, how are they going to engage at the local level? And when I would go out to these meetings, I would see very emotional people. They came off as a little bit cuckoo because they were throwing out, you know, conspiracy theories, even though we know they're conspiracy fact, but the way they were doing it, it came off that way. And they were, they were diminishing their their influence. And so over time, I developed an approach. I field tested it. It was very scary at times because I was pushing myself into confrontational um, situations and just to see how am I going to deal with this. And then that is how the, the workshop started how to become a citizen ninja. I thought we need a really strong name to describe ourselves. <laughs> I love that name. That's, that's great. That's exactly what we need to do. So how are we going to become that person? And how is a citizen ninja different from just a regular activist? And, uh, and so that's what I started teaching. And the demand was so high in one year. I trained, I think it was close to a thousand people. I was going all over the place, different organizations and training them. And in one of those, I, I met a publisher and she invited me to write the book. So then I published the book uh, and that's available on Amazon, uh, Stand Up to Power. And um, Citizen Ninja Stand Up to Power. And I then met Patrick Wood and now I am uh, the director of training for his new uh, 501c3 organization called uh, Citizens for Free Speech. And so, my goal is to teach the basics and then for, for people, folks, just like you and me, I mean, we weren't trained in this, right, Tom? I mean, yeah. we just saw a need and we put our best foot forward and, you know, we just, our goal is for freedom <laughs> and, um, and to try to wake people up and encourage people and, um, and, for me, it was really to teach the basics of how do you have civil political discourse? How can you be an effective activist uh, at the local level and really make a difference? And so that's what I've, that's been my, my MO uh, ever since I woke up. Well, that's perfect because that's exactly what we want to do here. So let's get started. Let's, uh, let's begin to lay that groundwork. As you said, uh, with so many people, I, 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 in the past when, for example, I'd have people come to my speeches and they would get all hopped up on what I had to say and talking about Agenda 21 and so forth. And the first thing they would do is rush into city council and say, you're implementing UN Agenda 21. And, the, and most of the councilmen had no idea what they were talking about. And of course, they're surrounded by these NGOs that are whispering in their ear, the guy's nuts, get him out of here. And, uh, you know, the people were, some of them were actually escorted out of the room. But uh, yeah, and I knew, and I, and I began a few years ago, uh, you know, trying to put together things. One, one of the things I ran into was 
we were putting out information, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Finally, I got notes from people saying, okay, I get it. What do I do about it? And I kind of jokingly answered, gee, I don't know. I never got that far before. <laughs> but uh, So now here we are to, uh, to take care of that. And uh, so again, let's get started and uh, let's show people what to do. That individual who doesn't know how to get started, doesn't know uh, how to get other people to help them, all that sort of thing. That's what we're going to cover. Yep, we are. And you've asked me to prepare a, um, a slide presentation. And so I'm ready when you are. All right, let's go. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you're exactly right, Tom. It, 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 as leaders, you know, how do we motivate people? How does one motivate themselves to, to act? Um, because your information that you've been giving for so long doesn't mean people are going to engage necessarily. And they're, and if they are going to engage, their engagement doesn't mean they're going to be effective. So I really thought about well, why didn't I engage early on? You know, what were the reasons and why does it sometimes still difficult for me to engage? And, and I've asked people this over the years and, and the stated excuses range from they're not comfortable in their knowledge, for example, uh, not just the content knowledge of a topic of their hot button issue, but also civic knowledge. You know, what are the rules of the game here? They don't know and they're afraid to, to mess up. Um, they don't know how to start or what to do, as you mentioned. They don't want to be exposed that they don't want to have confrontation and, and they're afraid, honestly, um, they're afraid. So I figured out that fundamentally we're really self-interested and we're ashamed to admit it. <laughs> um, most don't want to take responsibility to counter the problem. They know it's there, but they don't want to take the responsibility. They don't have enough time. They don't want to waste their time because they don't know what to do. They don't want to spin their wheels. They don't want to feel uncomfortable in their environment. Uh, and they don't want to be bullied by strangers. So these are some of the reasons, the self-interested reasons that they're ashamed to admit are why they don't engage. Um, but, but knowledge, even if we have the knowledge, that doesn't mean you're acting. When you have knowledge, it demands action. So some of the people you mentioned, you know, they get this knowledge and then they go out, you know, and they do something about it. But then it doesn't go well because they're not trained. They don't know how to speak the language and then it fails. And then we don't, they give up. And what we want is sustained activism, isn't it, Tom? We want all those people that we train to continue to be active and to be successful so that they become role models for others. And that's where you build your freedom pod you're talking about. Um, because that's, we want sustained activism with people who are effective so that they show others how to do it and become amazing role models. So, um, so that's what I do basically. I coach people how to engage effectively so their self-interested priorities are set aside for the benefits of positive change within their community. So I have four key points, actually five, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill into today. And the first one is key point number one, opportunities are everywhere. They are literally everywhere. You just have to open your eyes to see them. And we can break them up into four different categories, civic, electoral, and political, or the political voice, what I like to call the political voice. But there's also a fourth one that we like to avoid, and we don't even consider actually a measure of engagement, and that's the social measure. And many of us, most of us, want to avoid that as much as possible. And it's important to understand that in each of these four categories, there are ranges of intensity. So uh, just just because we're asking you to engage doesn't mean you have to go full tilt. Everyone has uh, a, an amount of time they have. They have different family structures. Um, 
they may work, uh, they may have some social uh, economic restraints. So everyone's different, but the important thing is that you do something. And so uh, in this next slide, I've divided up the, uh, the three, civic, electoral, and political voice, just to give you an example uh, of how uh, these can be divided up and they range in intensity. You'll see, I mean, under the civic column, running for office is incredibly intensive um, as opposed to uh, um, volunteering for a board position, for example, uh, or being a member in a group or association. But I always like to say, if you're going to be a member in a group or association, be an active member. Take your turn in the leadership role, for example. Just don't show up at meetings. You have to participate. Under the electoral column, we have different types of, of activities, uh, all the way from precinct walking, which you, know, you could choose to just target 10, uh, 10 neighbors, I, I, I like to call it actually visiting your neighbors, not precinct walking. Uh, you may just decide you wanna target your 10 neighbors and be consistently in touch with them and become the leader within that group, within your, your neighborhood, the one who's paying attention and who communicates with those people. And you never know, someone actually might decide they wanna join you and be a leader as well. And now your circle of influence is growing. But that can be an intense, uh, intensive activity as opposed to just displaying buttons, signs, or a sticker. But at least you're communicating something. That's what we want. We want some form of activity. And you decide, and as your confidence grows, as you practice and your confidence grows, you may do exactly what Tom and I did, which is you just keep becoming more intense. <laughs> um, and then the third column, political voice, uh, are, shows diff other types of activities um, from protests or demonstrations, which can be pretty intensive, uh, to writing a letter to the editor uh, or participating in a, in a radio program, uh, things like that. So um, the, the tips I have for you is First of all, assess the amount of time there is to engage when you decide to engage. Then make sure the topic you're bringing up is relates to the type of venue you're in. So if you're at a school board meeting, your topic is going to be privacy, data mining, or testing. Or if you decide to exercise your political voice at a gas station, make sure you're focusing on things like gas taxes or the conditions of roads. Don't start talking about some topic that really isn't associated at all with pumping gas. You know what I mean? Um, it has to make sense to the person with whom you're speaking. And then you want to, to be I have your head on a swivel, essentially. Pay attention to your situation, to the people uh, who are around you, so that if someone actually engages you, makes a comment, or asks you a question, that you're ready to respond, because we're going to talk about the difference between responding and reacting a little bit later. So those are some of my tips as you decide to step out of your comfort zone and, and get out there. But just a little comment on the social piece. The goal with social, the social measure is to find formal and informal political discourse opportunities with family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, and other members of the public. And these opportunities are found about town, at social gatherings, and the idea behind it is to proactively engage people in civil political discourse. Now, some of the tips here is when you do this, start with the intention of not trying to change someone's mind, especially if they disagree with you. And we'll get into some details about that in a minute. Um, we simply want to encourage dialogue about government and politics. So there are a number of situations that provide it opens for you to ask questions and to share your facts or opinions about something. But but uh, well, we'll talk about sharing opinions and where that lands you. Uh, pick the opportunities you perceive to be the most fruitful. Don't waste your time on 
on boondoggles. It's just not worth it. Move on to the next, to the next uh, person or situation. So key point number two is that power is a matter of influence, not coercion. And there are four indicators of what I consider to be a qualified citizen activist. The first is that that person pays attention to government business. They know what's going on. They look at the agenda, they read the newspaper, they have conversations with local elected uh, staff, uh, elected public servants. Um, so they are paying attention. Why? So they can respond to community issues. They can respond to what's going on. How can anyone respond if they don't know what's going on? If you don't know what's going on and suddenly you have a roundabout at the bottom of your street, well, now you are reacting and you're going to react with anger, surprise, shock, when you could have responded and actually have had an impact to change the direction of that plan. So when you do this, you're working to preserve self-government. Well, what is self-government? Self-government, simply put, is a government of, by, and for the people. It's the people's government. And we are allowed to have access to the business of the public, public business. We are allowed to have access to it. It is our right to have access to that. And when we do that, when we go and we watch business being conducted by our elected officials to whom we gave consent to run things, we are standing up to power. And that power is really not true power. That power is just dominant entrenched power. It's the system power. But what you need to understand is when you work to preserve self-government, when you pay attention to government business, when you respond to community issues, you are the power. That's what you need to understand. Now our power is greater at the local level than it is at the national level. And why is that? Our focus is so much at the federal national level, even at the state level. But how well do you know your representatives at the national state level, as opposed to your local representatives, your city council, your school board, your uh, county board? Those are the people you can, with whom you can build relationships with not the others. And so your influence is greater at the local level than it is at the national level. And because we're structured the way we are in the United States, all of the top down regulations that come from above down to the local level can be interrupted at the local level. Very, very difficult to do it at a higher level. So we want to focus locally, and Tom and I very feel very strongly about this. At the local level, we can build an, be an influence, we can build relationships and a lasting dialogue. This is where your power is. Now, I find it useful to talk about what is doesn't work, <laughs> what is not an effective approach, and you might recognize yourself uh, as I talk through these, these four. So the first is don't force an agenda or try to control outcomes. If you do, you're just no better than, <laughs> than the people you're, you're going up against. So what we rather want to do is number one, have a very sort of uh, altruistic feel about why we're getting out there. We want to see ourselves as a defender of sovereign, independent, and self-determining rights. We want to be leaders. We want to see ourselves as leaders, that this is what we are doing. And if we focus on this, if we focus on seek, seeking truth and due process and not a particular agenda or try to control an outcome, you will have a greater success because you actually really can't control an outcome. Remember I said those government agencies are the system power. They are the entrenched power. Very, very difficult to control outcomes. 
and, and control their agenda because they're setting the rules. They're the ones in charge. When you go to a city council meeting, that's their home team. That's their, that's their home field. It's not yours. It should be the other way around. But so it's very difficult. So what you need to do is instead of trying to control things and force things, you need to be an influencer. That is where the power is, not through coercion. Next is you don't want to fight fire with fury. And I have a lot of people who disagree with me on this, but it depends what your goal is. If you want uh, sustained activism where you have influence in the relationships with your local representatives, then you don't fight fire with fury. You don't react, you respond because you're paying attention and they know you are and they know you care. And so it's better to respond than to react in an emotional outburst. You listen to what's going on. You listen to the constraints, the restraints. What are the issues going on uh, around you? You want consistent participation. Just don't show up every once in a while. You need to show that you care by showing up frequently. Uh, in emailing, setting up a coffee, things like that. And you don't want to just say no. You want to offer constructive solutions. So when you focus on these things, you're going to be a greater influence. Then you want to be careful not to become the bully. When you're trying to force an agenda or control an outcome, you actually become the bully. And what happens when you become the bully is the people around you see you as the bully and they don't want to like you. And now you've lost your influence when you do this. So what you wanna do is have thoughtful messaging that is non-inflammatory. You wanna come off as a team player, basically, even though you, <laughs> even though you um, of course, you have goals, right? You're trying to get somewhere, but you want to come off as the team player. Stick to facts, not opinions in these environments. And then share personal stories. This, and we're going to talk a bit about the importance of this, because this is primary source information. I can, you can, or we all can uh, hand out facts all day long, but there's nothing like a personal story to get the point across. And I know Tom has both of us have lots of stories that we tell to get the point across and to get people listening. And when you do these things, you build trust and credibility. And then people want to listen to you. People want to work with you, right? This is what you're, you're trying to do to make a difference. And then finally, don't wing it. Just don't, you know, get this idea in your mind and then just wing something. It's just not going to lead to a high impact. You need training, which is what Tom is offering you through this program and what I offer you through my course. You're, you seek knowledge so you know what the rules of the game are and you understand the content. You have a game plan and you network with others. It's very difficult to sustain this without company and without people who, uh, who work with you and, and, and approach the situation the same way that you do. So you want to hold them accountable, right? We love that phrase, I'm gonna hold them accountable, but you need to see yourself as a partner versus an adversary, even though we're in a fight. You need to find those partnership. So um, we want high impact, high impact to make our time worthwhile. Key point number three is to be an interested party. So <clears throat> you want to be an interested member of the community who cares and wants to contribute. Think of yourself that way. So you need to show up. It's important because the people are being shut out of the decision-making process. It okay, Mary, let me interrupt you on uh, uh, some of this and uh, just ask you a couple of questions. You, you're talking about 
building a partnership. And, and I'm sure a lot of folks who are watching will realize that you know, we're up against a, a vicious uh, adversary here. Uh, I, in our first webinar, I spent a great deal of time explaining how the uh, non-governmental organizations and the planning groups control everything. And uh, they're standing right there behind your elected officials. They're whispering in their ear, if one of us shows up, pay no attention to that guy, he's crazy, and you know, so forth. So in that sense, how, uh, when you're talking about a partnership, can you explain a little bit more about that and what, uh, how to do that and what that means? Definitely. And it's, it's a, a tactic that I, or a strategy that I developed um, because the goal is dialogue. The goal is to make a difference or to change the direction of something, right? So that, that's what we're hoping for. So in order to do that, we need to influence, right? We, we can't control them. We've already talked about that. Uh, because they're in charge, right? They, they're in charge of the whole thing, the rules, the, the setting, um, the language, the plan, everything. And in, in later, I'll talk a bit more about how they do that. But, and you've of course mentioned it, but if you have a partner, if, if the adversary sees you as someone who really wants to work in partnership to towards something, uh, they're much more willing to meet with you and talk with you than if they see you as an adversary. Now, sometimes uh, you've already blown that relationship. <laughs> and I get that. <laughs> and so it might be hard to, to walk back. But that's why it's so important to work with a network. So you're not always the head, right? You can be behind the scenes and find, find those allies in the community with whom you can work so that those partnerships can be built. And I, I can only just really speak from my own experience because um, it really didn't matter to me or what political party my city council members were. I just wanted, uh, my whole goal with them was to develop a relationship. So I, and by the way, while I was developing that relationship, sharing with them information about sustainable development. So uh, I, they were, they liked sitting down, having coffee, not being exposed in front of uh, a whole uh, uh, a whole a community of people watching them at the dais. They liked the idea of having coffee with me, sitting down, getting to know one another. You know, what are your concerns in the city? What are your goals in the city? And, and let me share some with you. When you do this, they actually let their guard down and they start talking. And sometimes you'll have mischievous ones who will say something like, well, you're not going to talk to me about Agenda 21, are you? And then you simply say, gosh, why do you bring that up? And, oh. you know, you, you, you don't get, you don't react, you don't get defensive. You, you put it back on them, get them to talk. And we'll talk later. I'll, I'll share more about how you do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I would think uh, one of the things that uh, comes to my mind as, as you're doing that is maybe they've proposed uh, some kind of policy that is going to damage some people. And uh, you could go in and say, hey, I, maybe you're not aware of this. Uh, I want to let you know if you do this, this neighborhood is going to suffer this or this business will suffer or whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, Kind of share it that way. Just, just want to let you know that that's a, that's a concern. Some of the people who are there are are feeling something like that. Yes, and if you can get them to agree that they care about that kind of thing, uh, especially in a public setting or maybe when they're running for office, if you can get them that they yes, I believe in transparency, for example, or I believe I care for those communities. It becomes much easier later on to say, you know, you said you cared about those communities. And, and it seems to me uh, you're overlooking uh, what the impact is going to be on those communities by voting on this 
voting on this? It, it, is there a way we can work around this? What, you know, what are your goals? What is it about this that you like? You know, and, and how can we uh, take those communities into consideration? Or you say you believe in transparency, and yet I don't see enough public workshops on this topic. You know, what can we do to really promote transparency? You know, you got to get them. <laughs> the only way you can do that is to build a relationship with somebody and have them see you as a partner versus a, a or um, I'm not saying you're an ally. I'm saying you're in partnership versus an adversary, even though in you inside yourself, you're like, Err. <laughs> you in other, in other words instead of smacking them you're trying to <laughs> hold their hand and guide them in the right direction yeah because think <laughs> about it you just i mean you say it you know they when they run for office they don't know this stuff they don't know what they're getting into they've got something in mind they ran for a reason and then they get there and go wow there's all this other stuff i've got to deal with and of course you know the state and the American Planning Association and the staff, they're, they're very quick to indoctrinate them uh, to their way of thinking. This is, this is a very important point mm -hmm. because the, uh, you know, they, as you said, they are guiding them through step by step and, you know, pay no attention to that person behind the counter over there, the, the, the curtain and uh, just yeah. listen to me. But if we are there, this is, this is what I hear more often than anything else from elected officials is our side is never there. We're right. not at the public meetings. We're not, uh, we're not talking, we don't give them a call and say, councilman, I wanna to talk to you about this. They don't hear from us at all. And then one person boldly marches in and says, I gotta tell you about all this. And, and, and unfortunately, so many of them are, are just saying, you're introducing uh, international policy here and so forth. And that's why the NGOs are able to say you're a nutcase mm -hmm. and, and dismiss you. And uh, as you're saying, if you're getting involved at the very beginning of the process, and uh, uh, can can get their ear, and, and you know, in, in, in your words, is a, is a partnership. That's what you mean by it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the other thing that uh, is the worst nightmare of the NGOs is to go into the area where their plans are. If they're, they've got some new development plan that's going to uh, tear down buildings and kill small mom and pop shops and that sort of thing, you got victims there. Get the go down there and tell those people that uh, this is what this plan is. This is what uh, they're coming for you, and get some of those people to show up to city council as victims of this. That's the NGO's worst nightmare. And now you've taken control of the argument. And uh, the, the, this isn't a, an international agenda I'm promoting here or anything. This is my neighbors and what we're going to do to them. Do you care about them? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, very very good point. Um, yeah. The personal story, um, the the relating to them is is the way to the to the heart and to the to the vote you're seeking. And it is the NGO's worst nightmare. They're counting on you not showing up. And it's so true. Those elected officials, they maybe there's just one who disagrees with the other four. Let's just say there are five of them. And there's one who disagrees with the other four, but he knows he's the one actually that we, we want to help, we want to support, and yet we don't show up. And so then, and then the other side shows up, so there isn't a balance in the debate going on. And uh, he may not, he or she may not even be informed, you know, to what the issues are. They just have a sense about it. And uh, how they now have a political dimension that is. Ex incredible pressure now to be the lone vote yes or no that's very very difficult to ask somebody and so if you believe in an elected official and you vote for them and maybe you even help them campaign or maybe you've donated money to their campaign to help them win and they win it is your responsibility and your obligation to support that individual to build that partnership and to help them. Because when you do that, you help the rest of the community and to bring others with you, you know, and take turns doing this. It's exhausting. You take turns doing it. Um, and then gradually, there'll be another opportunity where you can build a relationship with the next one and then the next one. 
And pretty soon, you're the one who gets up there that they listen to because you're credible, you're professional, you're not reactionary, you're doing the work, you're helping, you're, you've been appointed to an ad hoc committee, for example, that's what, I, that's what I used to do, get myself on those committees. Now you're listened to versus the reactionary person who comes in, this is a international <laughs> a conspiracy, they, they just don't even listen to you. And so that's a waste of your time. Yeah. If you, as you're going back a minute, uh, you're talking about there's that one member of the council, maybe there's two that are in a minority. They believe, as we do, uh, about how, how this should be going, what the policy should be and the representative, and they're overwhelmed. And one of two things is going to take place. They're either going to give up because they can't get it done, or they're going to say, well, okay, these guys are making sense. I guess I'll join the other side. And, uh, and then we've lost them. But if right from the very beginning, if you're talking with them, going to them, recognizing their leadership and standing up to these things, they're going to get bolder. They're going to stand up to it and uh, they know they aren't standing there alone. That is, you know, one of the mantras that I do all the time is, first of all, don't do this alone. But the other thing we like to do is take an ele elected official and send him out there on the stage by himself. Go, you go, you go, you know, stand out in front of everybody. And nobody wants to be alone. And so, you know, this is, this is our way that uh, we don't even, we don't have to be in front of everybody. We can be doing it behind the scenes, talking to them, but giving them the, the uh, confidence that they know that they, they have support for what they're doing. And, uh, you know, then the next step would be obviously to build on that support and uh, make sure we can react if they don't go our way. But um, yeah. yeah, it's it's true. And, and just to go back to if you've already have an adversarial relationship with somebody, the example I can give of how that could be repaired might be repaired is an example. Actually, one of my students, uh, a citizen who I trained, shared with me after taking the training, she had showed up. Um, actually, it was in the midst of it. She had gone to a political uh, a Republican women's meeting and she had her badge on and then she went back to work and forgot to take her badge off and so then she was exposed to the her co-worker at the water cooler who then decided it was okay to be snarky and make obnoxious comments and passive-aggressive comments to her every time he saw her and it became actually a, a situation that was quite unbearable. So then she took my training and decided she what she would do is followed my advice and go to him and just ask him a question and say, hey, obviously you and I disagree uh, politically, but I'm really interested to know why you hold the beliefs you do. And I, I really am interested and I'd love to, to sit down with you maybe after work sometime and talk about it. And what happened was the guy was so shocked that she actually took this, changed her approach and, uh, and was showing that she cared how he thought that eventually uh, he then asked her the same question. And now, I mean, I don't know what it, the way it is now, I don't even know if she's still working there, but she said they were building a relationship and they, she had gotten past this environmental factor that had been so unbearable and so terrible um, to, to get, to move forward and, and build dialogue. And I really believe that can happen. I mean, unless they're truly evil and there aren't that many truly evil people at city council. Most of them are just <laughs> misinformed uh, or, or totally indoctrinated. Yeah. Oh, this goes right back to what I was saying in our first webinar that uh, you know, you you get good people to run for city council, county commission, and uh, all of a sudden they've changed, and you don't mm -hmm. know why. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned in that, you know, the first thing we do once they get elected is send them off to these national meetings, the uh, you know National League of Cities, and uh, you know groups like that, and they're hearing from the podium these same NGOs. And it's just indoctrinated into them that eventually they think, well, this is a proper role of government. And then when one of our people oddly shows up and says something the complete opposite, then they just don't, they, where's this coming from? I don't understand, you're an oddball. 
And uh, so, yeah, that uh, mm -hmm. bottom line here, what we're saying is you've got to be engaged with your elected officials. You've got to be in front of them. They've got to know you're there. So, they do. Yeah. And they're going to be much more responsive to you if you show up consistently, you volunteer to be on, on different boards and commissions, committees. And you come off as credible, reasonable, a um, team player. And, uh, and I say this in my book, uh, you, you won't have all the wins by doing this, but you will influence the outcome. Something will change. Something will be better because you got involved. You may not win and it may not be, you know, if you may not stop it, whatever it is but you will have influenced part of it and it will be better because of your input and your, and your action. Yeah. And that brings up, I wanna, I wanna end with this a very important point. Uh, we have to make sure that we accept all victories, no matter how tiny they are. A victory is a victory. So many people from our side will go down opposed to something and they didn't win and you know they just said well it didn't work and my question to them is always well, what did you do the next day well nothing because it didn't work well that's why and uh, you, you build on those tiny little victories and pretty soon you might get a big one if you if you continue that way yeah that's right yep very good point yeah. okay i uh i want to bring this one to a uh, to a conclusion to, uh, you know, we're laying the groundwork here. We've got a lot more to do. And uh, so we're gonna go in uh, very soon to our second uh, session with you, Mary, and uh, we'll get more into more details here. And uh, we're gonna end today with uh, some information on the manual that we have uh, produced to go along with this uh, uh, series of webinars. And a lot of your details, a lot of your materials are in there. And uh, you know we're we're doing building blocks here. We're starting with the very basics, and we're going to build it right up to how to run for office, how to introduce uh, legislation. We've got sample legislation. We've got legal actions, all kind of things. It's going to take us about nine webinars to get through all that. But uh, this this is where we're going. This is what this is about. So uh, I appreciate your your time so far. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, get ready because Mary's going to be back for our next webinar, and uh, we have a whole lot more to tell you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Hi, this is Tom DeWeese from uh, the American Policy Center, and uh, I want to tell you about the full program that we are uh, putting together as we put these webinars together. The webinars are the first part of what we are uh, working on to help local activists become citizen ninjas, become powerful to fight on the local level to stand up to things and, uh, and these policies and uh, your city councils and your county commissions and effectively push back on the things that they're putting together. And uh, we're putting together the series of webinars. And one of the things you can do with these webinars is uh, keep them uh, they'll be available on our website at AmericanPolicy.org. You can share them with others. You can watch them over and over again. You can use them as uh, programs for uh, organizations that you're already part of and begin a training process there. We've got to get a cadre of trained activists to stand up to the forces that we are up against. Uh, what we're facing, you can see by, what's, by watching your television every night now, what we are up against uh, in a in a uh, an opposition that is highly trained to absolutely destroy the Republic of the United States of America, your property rights, your uh, uh, you know your your ability to live your life as you choose, and what we are doing here is working to counter that uh, effort that they are putting together, and uh, and begin to uh, restore our liberties. And uh, again, the webinars are the first part of that. And the second thing that we've done is we've put together this uh, activist handbook to uh, how to uh, fight back on the local level. In fact, the webinars are basically designed to bring this to life. Let me just share with you some of the things that are in this manual. I don't think anybody has ever put together a more comprehensive 
uh, tool for you to, uh, to use in, in these cases. First of all, we've got a great deal of information in here about the, uh, the uh, real uh, enemy that you're, you're facing. The, uh, the, the Green New Deal, the uh, Agenda 21, sustainable development policies that are taking over every single community. And I know if you've been an activist, you've gone to try to talk to your city councilman and so forth, and they'll tell you, I've never heard of it, don't know what that is, uh, you know, tell me something about it, whatever. Well, we've got all the details here of why it's bad news. And um, one of the things we're, we're focusing, focusing on in, in the manual is how to take the offensive for liberty and uh, how to create your community as a freedom pod where you are in your community alone, you are fighting back to restore and protect private property, free enterprise, and your personal freedom of choice. Those are the American pillars of freedom that we've all enjoyed uh, through the history of the United States that are now under attack. We're teaching you how to fight back with those things. Uh, particularly, we're focusing on the local governments. The, um, everybody wants to get in, involved in the presidential campaigns and, and work on with Congress or whatever, but we believe that the most effective thing you can do to fight back is start on the local level and it will grow up uh, to the state legislature and then on into Congress and so forth, but it rarely works the other way. And we focus on that in, in the manual. Um, we're gonna talk about some of the organizations, the NGO organizations that uh, are in your communities and how they operate. The, uh, uh, the uh, National Association of Realtors and how they have absolutely betrayed the whole issue of property rights, which they ought to be the leading advocate for, the uh, American Planning Association, how they've taken over every single community in this country and putting in plans. They say free enterprise doesn't work, so they have to have their planning. That should give you a real hint as to what their, their planning is really about, but they call it smart growth. Um, and they're destroying private property, private property ownership and so forth. We're gonna talk about how to take legislative action and uh, uh, we have put together five, a package of five bills that are all designed to cut back on the size, cost, growth, uh, reach of government that uh, is particularly on private property rights. And we're gonna teach you, you and legislators how to use these bills in, in legislators and start a movement across the country. Uh, we're gonna go into great detail about that. The, um, uh, you know, taking the offense, to restore our liberty is, is what this is all about and how to become a, a citizen ninja. We've got eight rules for successful activists to follow what those are, how to organize, how to research. Uh, we've got in here uh, a city survey. If you take this document and fill it out, a city survey on your community and you will find what kind of programs you have there, who's involved, what they are. Once you get this whole document filled out, you'll know everything you need to know about your city and how to begin to fight back. It's a very, very valuable tool and it's in the manual. Um, the, uh, you know, how to write effective uh, uh, letters to the editor and how to use the media, not just newspapers and uh, television and radio, but also social media and uh, how, how we uh, need to use those things and, and, and organize and uh, get your message out. Uh, we have some tools in here that are extremely effective. And uh, a lot of them are used to call out your elected officials. Do they stand for free enterprise, private property, and limited government? Or are they promoting these massive government programs? We have some resolutions asking them to sign whether they do or not. And if they don't sign, you've got your answer. Uh, we've got a... Um, a pledge for uh, elected officials and candidates to sign. Guy's running for office and he says, oh yeah, I'm with you. Well, here's a, here's a, a resolution for him, a pledge for him to sign saying that he supports private property rights. Now, if he signs it, wonderful. And if he starts to betray that when he gets into office, you've got that document in hand to say, hey, you know, what are you doing here? This is what you said you believed in when we elected you, uh, these kind of things. We've got a whole lot of handouts that you can uh, produce and uh, hand out to people on, on various issues, conservation easements and other uh, uh, attacks on private property. And uh, wherever it you know, fits your need, we can, we can uh, have that there. And um, 
we can uh, t we, we have a section in a manual talking about how to take back the elective process how to get into your precinct organization and uh, you know it, you know if you organize your own precinct you could become a very powerful person in your community elected officials or candidates would come to you say help me and you could say where do you stand what do you stand for uh, that, that'll determine whether I help you or not. This is in the manual. The, uh, one of the big things that I've been working on for the last year and a half is a means to make elected officials re personally responsible for their own actions. How do you do that? There are some legal actions that can be taken. We now have a couple of them that uh, one of them has to deal with the uh, 14th Amendment. One of them has to deal with the Section 1983 of the Civil Rights Act. We're going to have uh, webinars on this, and we're going to teach you, and it's in the manual as well, uh, how, to, how to deal with these things. And uh, then we have just a whole lot of documents. You know what the Wildlands Project is? We've got a document in here that will tell you what it is. It's how they're taking f uh, rural land. Uh, do you know what complete streets are? We've got a document in here that'll tell you what that is. And uh, international building codes, controls on urban growth, uh, the, uh, the AFFH bill from uh, HUD, affirmatively furthering fair housing, which by the way, the Trump administration has now said they're gonna take away, but the National Association of Realtors says, well, we'll pick up the ball and take that instead. That again shows you their betrayal national heritage areas and so forth. All of these are documents and much, much more in this manual that uh, we have now uh, put together and it's all available for you on, uh, I'll tell you what, the manual itself now is ready on Amazon and on our website at AmericanPolicy.org and uh, it is $49.99 to just buy it outright. However, a lot of these programs, a lot of these documents, the, the, a lot of the research documents that are just too big to put into this document, we now have those. We have a, on our website called a toolkit, and that toolkit has a lot of these documents. It has also where, where in the manual we do have some of these handouts that you can, uh, that you can use, but it's kind of hard to get them out of the book, so you can download them from the website. And uh, so uh, all of these kinds of documents and, and more, we're, we're getting ready to put together some, uh, uh, another uh, section on the website where we can uh, document uh, the activists in different communities and uh, actions they've taken successfully or not, uh, sample legislation, all that sort of thing. And, uh, and by the way, in, in here, we have a, a kit of uh, uh, five bills that have been presented to us, uh, provided for us by state legislator, Matt Shea in Washington state, that all focus on limiting uh, government and, uh, and pr protecting private property. And those are downloadable on the toolkit, on the website. So it's all in there together. And uh, what we're asking with all of these details, you know, uh, 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 about a year or two years ago, I put out a, what I wanted to, a five point action plan of how to restore all this. The webinars are the first part of that action plan. The website is another part that uh, as we're putting it together uh, and, and as that uh, is being developed and we're working on and, and again putting these uh, media sources together as I mentioned the radio shows things like that. Those are all part of that action plan. Well you know it, it, it takes uh, some funds to put all these things together. So what we're asking is you can get the manual for just $49.99 on, uh, on, on Amazon, or for a donation of at least $100, you can have access to everything, the manual itself and the toolkit and uh, all the updates that we give as they come along and uh, lots and lots of other information that will be coming down the pike as we do that. You will be part of the team. Just a donation, a one-time donation of $100, and uh, you'll have access to all of that. So. Our goal is to restore the Republic of the United States of America and all the freedoms that we were guaranteed uh, to be protected in our constitution. That is our goal. We are up against a massive force, as you know, but we can beat them. And they are terrified that you're going to learn the information that we're providing here. And uh, the, the last thing they want is for you to know this information. So get the information, become a powerful citizen ninja in your own community, how to organize, how to fight back, all the details, everything you need, 
all of it comes together. Uh, if you can see your way to give us a donation of at least $100 one time, then you will have access to all of it. So I hope you'll do that. I hope you'll join us. And let's take America back. Thank you.